Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NHL slate uh, for this evening, showing a process that I use to build my uh, my lineups, both my big buy-in and also the, uh, uh, the portfolio of MME lineups. Uh, we're going to take a look at my Sheets, we're going to take a look at, at SaberSim, we're going to take a look at the contest sims, and again, the purposes of these videos is not to just tell you who to play tonight because quite honestly it's early projections will change or whatever but the purpose is to provide and share my process so that quite honestly you don't have to come back and keep watching these videos that as long as you have the tools at your disposal you know to to build good lineups that you have a process to take advantage of now again it's not that easy and you have to get access to good projections and get you know and get a lot of practice with uh you know both the science and the art of building these things and 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 i don't pretend that i know all the answers because the fact is is that if everybody knew specifically and without a doubt how to build these things and how to do it efficiently then the game would be solved and because it's not solved that's what makes this puzzle worth uh worth playing honestly uh, anyway so again, it's weird. The, the, the process I use for hockey is a little different than basketball. It's a little different from football. And again, it's just what I do. So what I like to do is I like to first um, just take a good overall view of the slate, okay? And just take a look at the team totals. And it's like very pedestrian, you know what I mean? Like normally in like basketball, I would just go straight to the projections, straight to the projections and just roll, right? Um, but I do like to get at least a sense of, of what, what teams I'm expecting to, to perform well and then see if that matches with, with, the, with the projected players. And then when we get our contest sims going, it will remind us of, what, of what's going on here. Because just the other day, for example, I ran my contest sims and I ended up with like recommending like 70% of, of, a, of a team, like a 2.2 total, and it gives you kind of some pause. you know. And, and so it's a good idea to get a sense of what you expect before you see – what actually comes up. It's also a good idea to get a sense for how this slate plays out as far as what, what starts sooner than later. So the first thing I'll just look at is the team totals. We look for, you know, the highest ones there are, and usually someone approaches four. And Tampa, 3.9. That's that's really good. Um, what else? Dallas, 4.3. That's really big. And then Edmonton, 4.8. Uh, boy, that's got to be... Not only that, but it's like a 2.8 uh, spread, which puts, uh, you know, empty net goals in play and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, that's, uh, imagine a, a team total, which is going to be respected in the projections. But that doesn't mean that the players are going to be at a price that will allow you to play them. But we'll, we'll get to that. And then you have Calgary, which uh, it's, it's, First of all, the 3.8, which is good. Second of all, it's a one-point spread, which is good. One goal spread. And also, it's also a late game, which gives you a little bit of extra flexibility. So all else being equal, you want to compare a Calgary 3.8 to a to a Tampa 3.9. It's pretty close, you know. But but I think that you almost even want to give Calgary a little bit of an edge because of you know the flexibility you have uh, in playing late games in general. So overall, I would imagine. Nonetheless, Tampa would look good, that Carolina may be, but then certainly Edmonton and Calgary. All right, so again, I, I don't – sometimes I go straight to the projection sheets. Sometimes I go to the stacks, okay? Um, but let's, let's take a look at the players first. Now, again, these are the sheets that are available on True DFS for, for premium members. And these are being rated in this way, okay? You can filter them whichever way you want, but uh, this, this column sheets value score is a good combination of both uh, you know, points per dollar and just raw points. And that's, what I, that's how I rank them. And all we're trying to do is just find guys in the top 20 or so that are all on the same team. And, and, and frankly, it would be nice if they all played on the same line also. And that's why you have the even strength and power play lines over here to double check. And uh, not surprisingly, you know, uh, 
you're seeing some of the some of the candidates that I you know, alluded to earlier. But let's see what do I what do I see immediately? And immediately I see a bunch of Edmondson, right? Uh, McDavid, Drysital, but then you know a little bit of a drop down to Nugent Hopkins. And the other thing you'll notice is that these guys are both very expensive. So so to get to McDavid and Drysital, you are going to need to find some value to kind of make that work. Uh, and then I see Hyman here at 8,500. So this is going to be a very expensive stack. Um, so don't be surprised if it's, it's very difficult to get to. Uh, next thing you'll notice is a David Pasternak, a big old 10K, and nobody else in Boston really listed. So uh, then we get into a little bit of theory here about what to do when you have that situation. I've been, you know, I've been told uh, that playing real expensive one-offs is not usually the best way to play. Again, this is, sounds like one of those things that makes sense, but really hasn't been back tested appropriately. But for now, I'll, I'll, I'll hold that uh, as being true. So maybe boss is not going to work. Then you have, I see Kucho off again, very, very expensive. And nobody else in Tampa. So it's, it's looking like a very, very nasty slate. I, I have a couple of Islanders here that are all kind of on the same line. That makes some sense. And this, this next thing I'll notice is that Martin Neckis is probably the top, well, between him and Atkinson, these are the top two cheapos. Along with Jamie Benn. All right, so now we're getting something. So Jamie Benn at 3,600 on the first Dallas power play line, given everything else that I've said, you know, about Dallas having a big team total, I have a feeling that's going to show up as a, as a pretty good stack. And then you see Kadri... Oh, uh, here we go. So Kadri, Lindholm, Backlands. So you have two out of three Calgarys uh, all on the same line. So it's it's not really the easiest from a hand building perspective. And, and that's I, I like to look at that. The the other thing you'll notice is that you have a nice cheap old cheap goalie here at seventy six hundred. Does rate to be highly owned, but nonetheless, I mean, it does open up like quite a bit. Um. See Alex Lyon, Lyon 7,800, but he's rated a little bit lower. So what I like to do is then go to the stack page and take a look and see what that looks like. And it's just a different display, sort of, of really the same information because it takes the same players and just puts them all together if they're on the same line. So we rate them by three different metrics. One is by just raw points. Second is by value, which is essentially point per dollar. And third is modified, which is really just the sheet's value score. A, you know, made into a stack form. So when you look at rating these guys by just raw points, you see Edmonton with a big advantage over, say, Tampa and the Islanders, and then a drop to Boston, Dallas, and Nashville. When you go into stacks rated by point per dollar, you get Montreal, Carolina, Dallas, Tampa. Okay, so Dallas and Tampa are showing up twice, right? They're showing up as good raw and as good value, which probably means you're going to probably want to get to them. And then when you look at rated by modified, once again, Edmonton, Islanders, Dallas, Tampa. So Dallas, Tampa would probably be the ones I would try to do first. And the guy that I mentioned as a good value piece being Jamie Ben, probably makes that all worth doing. So at this point, you could either try to go straight to hand building or you saber sim. So just for now, let's go into straight hand building and see if we can't build on the information that we saw. So Dallas seems pretty reasonable. Um, probably be able to get to it. We can start with Jamie Ben, And I'll just literally go into here. And you can either start with the stack pages or just the sheet pages. Jason Robertson, strong. Um, basically, we're going to play that. Boy, it's kind of tough because these guys aren't rated so high. So you have Hints, Robertson, and Ben. So we can start with those guys. Hints, Robertson, and Ben. And we want to at least get a fourth. So what else would we like? Let's let's go back into here, see if there's any other Dallases or even listed at the top. And you don't get all that much, actually. 
So maybe Dallas is not the main, you know, the main stack to play. Oh, here we go. So we get Wyatt Johnston. No, he's interesting. He's not on that first power play line along with um, along with uh, Jamie Benn. So the correlation kind of drops a little bit. So we could put him in, though. Wyatt Johnston, let's put him in for now. Let's see what other, if we go into the stack tool, we can get some guidance on who to play. Uh, ben, so it would be probably Pavelski. So what position is he? Uh, he's another wing. So a bunch of wings and all these Dallas guys. Let's put that goalie in from the Islanders. Chief goalie against Montreal. And you got 5,000 a man, which you can fill out really easily. Like, for example, we saw, well, we didn't get any defensemen yet. So let's see what the best defensemen we have of the teams that we were kind of looking at. So let's see, defensemen, Dobbs and 7,400. Well, these guys are really expensive, though. You could play Victor Hedman, 64. Boy, defense is kind of tough today. Well, you could certainly play Dobson because he correlates with the, um, with the, uh, with the goalie a little bit. And let, well, you can't really play Barzal, though, because of positional problems. You could play Lindholm as a one-off center, maybe. Or you can go straight to Horvath and play some more Islanders. So what does that look like? You need to have some kind of value. Like it's 5,000 a man. You want to do something. So you play Kadri, then you're probably playing some kind of you want to play some kind of Calgary defenseman and then kind of a one-off. But you can do this, right? So overall, like from a hand-building perspective, um, it's not easy, but you can you can do it. Now, again, these are no playing no Edmontons, so it's pretty pretty scary. I mean, you could if you wanted to wimp out. You know, you could play, you know, one one-off from, from Edmonton or something like that. Um, I like kind of full fading if I'm going to fade it anyway. As if Edmonton goes off, you're just, you know, you get enough out of Darnell Nurse or whatever, and someone's going to have some Edmonton stack of berries, you might think. Anyway, uh, let's uh, go into Saberson, and we're going to build lineups using our projections. In And I love doing this with NHL because the difference between what you get with your contest sim-generated lineups versus what you get with your just regular – I guess Saber score built lineups is so dramatic, a uh, good amount of the time. Um, uh, so let's uh, let's do that. So the first thing I want to do, let's upload our projections. Now again, you can use a Saber sim projection, you can use your own, whatever. But this is going to be a process. Okay. All right, we click on exclude unlisted players, and I don't know what this is still. And we're going to build lineups. So we're going to build 50 lineups. And because it's a big slate, now nah, we'll, we'll keep it at 20 max. I don't think it's – we could make it 150. See, it doesn't really change that much, right? So it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and build 50. Let's see what we get. It's also a very also hockey is a really really good sport to let an optimizer help you. Uh, it finds those stacks and that you know that's very difficult to find when you do it by hand. And also Saberson provide you know get you that correlation upside uh, with its you know distribution charts and things like that that you wouldn't get on your own. Okay, so it's important to know what we're looking at here. So what we're looking at is your top 50 lineups 
of the 5,000 we've built, right? We built 5,000 lineups. And it's being rated by this Saber Sim generated default, which is Saber score and large slate, because you know, be 10K to 50K people playing. If you click on the eye, it'll dive into how this is calculated. But needless to say, this is pretty, you know, it's pretty aggressive. This is, these are pretty good GPP lineups, especially for hockey. Sometimes some sports they don't give you as much upside as maybe you'd like with that setting. But for hockey, this is a good this is a good set. You know, and you could, as long as it's the stacks put, you know, laid out the way that you like, you could just roll with this if you want. So, like for example, the first thing I would do is uh well, may as well just take a peek and see who we have. Um I mean it's not that big of a, a swamping. Like it's all this Islanders, Edmonton, Carolina. It's a pretty decent um whatchamacallit, pretty decent distribution of uh, of stacks, more than you would think. Like if you look under team stacks, this is this is pretty uh this is pretty encouraging. And then when you look at stack exposure, all right, so this is what I don't like. I, I don't like these four twos on a big slate. So we're gonna X those out. We don't like these three, three, twos, three, twos. You know, we really want purity on these big slates. So we're just going to get rid of all these. And we're going to see how that impacts what we do. Um, three, two, twos. We'll get rid of all of them too. And I have to tell you, this really does bother me because if Saberson is really recommending these these offbeat stacks, it's probably for a reason. Nonetheless, uh, next thing I will do is I would like to just double check and see how that would affect my team stacks. And uh, I really like this. See, normally what I would do is I would say, okay. I usually end up with an 80% of somebody or whatever, and then I end up having to mess with the min uniques to make sure that I'm, you know, I have a little more distribution. But this is, I might, this is at this point, when you get this type of distribution, I might consider going to this. Okay. Um, so I might just roll with this, you know, if I felt like it. So again, the other thing you could do if you want, like I said, is you could go min uniques two or something like that. Just, just you know, break it up a little bit more, give yourself a little more, a few more outs, so to speak. I'm certainly not going to argue with, with with doing something like that. So let's for now let's let's upload these for for, for openers. Download our main template, which was basically dummy lineups. And then we will upload these for now. And then what we're gonna do, just in case, okay, let's uh, just put them all in here, save them all. And then we wanna right click this and hit add contest. It's gonna save all the data on the contest um, so that when we run our simulation, it's going to you know, create a field of lineups to compare our 5,000 lineups against. With the idea being that takes into account ownership and leverage and stuff like that. It's just a little bit better than your, your Sabre score builds normally, okay? At least in theory. Um, we don't really know if this field of lineups is accurate, um, but it's, it's at least an attempt. So what we're gonna do now, once we've done that, is we're gonna click Run Contest Sim, and it is going to be running the simulation of all three of these contests. And then what it's going to do, it's going to allow us to re-rank these 5,000 lineups in ways other than this large slate Sabre score uh, metric. We're going to rate, be able to rate them against each contest based on the inputs that we've put in, based on, you know, whatever our, our ROI rates to be or what, what those lineups ROIs rate to be. In those particular in those specific contexts. So let's take a look.
We have to wait another more than five seconds. I will pause this and wait until you come back so you don't have to see this. It really shouldn't take this long though. Okay, there it is. All right, so uh, let's re-rate these by say the kick save, by risk adjusted ROI and see how things change. Um. Okay, so it, it really didn't, what it did was it moved Dallas up to the top, which I actually don't mind. Boy, this is a, and what it did do also is it made almost a full fade of Edmonds. So I, I like this a lot, actually. I actually might replace that initial build with this, with this one. Because it does, you know, give me more Dallas than the other one. So let's go ahead and do that. Replace our kick save. And as I said, a lot of this is, is art versus science necessarily. Um, now let's do uh, Thursday Night Ice, which is the big buy-in. This all looks pretty reasonable. Now you have the situation where you have Robertson is kind of a, it's not a real high price one-off. He's, he's mid-price, so I guess that's okay. We'll put him in and we'll put this one in here. Then the blue line, which is the three max, I would imagine it's going to be a little less volatile. Let's see. And let's actually get in the same lineup. That's okay. We can put it in. We can always change it. And then we will uh, just download our lineups and save it. And that's and that's the process. It's usually it, not usually. Sometimes it's harder. Sometimes you get like ninety percent of a team. And it messes with your brain, okay? And it causes you to like make changes in your in your approach. In other words, if I were getting say eighty percent of a player of, of a of a of a stack, I might go you know more min uniques than than maybe I otherwise would have. Maybe I'd be more inclined to go straight to the contest sims or something like that. But because this particular slate gives you a what you would at least appears to be a pretty well diversified portfolio of pretty good high upside stacks. Uh, I'm very comfortable with with not making too many changes there. Uh, and that will do it. Uh, uh, good luck, everybody. And uh, hope you guys learned something.